Are you getting the highest rents possible in your properties? If you're not, you may wanna look at ways to add value to your properties. Increasing your revenue will put more money in your pocket, but it will also make your properties worth more money because the more money a rental property makes, the more money it is worth in the eyes of a lender or a potential purchaser. So in this video, I'll break down how you can add value to your rental property. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share a special hack to lower your costs on your rental property too. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. The key to adding value to a rental property is to find things that have the highest return on investment. If you're not familiar with how to measure return on investment, it's very simple. How much are you going to spend on your upgrades versus how much revenue will this upgrade provide? This will give you your return on investment. In an ideal world, if you can recoup your investment within two years, this is a good benchmark for adding value. Here are eight ways to add value to your rental properties that have a high return on investment. Number eight, adding storage. There's a reason that storage facilities are a great investment and that's because people have a lot of junk and instead of getting rid of that junk, they will pay to store it. So why not create some storage inside of your rental properties? You could create storage in an unused basement, you could build a shed, or if you've got the space, a shipping container makes for great storage. The great thing about adding storage spaces is that they're relatively low maintenance. So once they're built, there's not a lot of upkeep. Number seven, sound separations. If you have a multi-unit building, the need for sound separation becomes imperative. Tenants do not want to hear other tenants. So the more sound separation you can provide in your rental properties, the better. This is not something that's going to generate higher rent because most people don't know how soundproof a building is until they move in. But this will translate to people staying in your buildings longer, which reduces your turnover and your potential vacancy. It also reduces complaints. So for me, these two have a very high return on investment. If you're renovating, put some money into figuring out how to make your properties more soundproof. You'll thank me later. Number six, covered parking or a garage. No matter where your rental properties are located, if your tenants have vehicles, having a covered area will add value to your rental properties. In Canada, this will alleviate the need for them to clear snow off their vehicle. In a place like Arizona, a covered parking spot will help keep vehicles cooler in the heat of the summer. Adding a garage is even better. Tenants will pay extra to have the use of the garage for storage, parking vehicles, or maybe even using it as a workspace. And as a bonus tip, look at adding charging stations for electric vehicles. This will be a huge selling feature in the very near future and could be the reason why a tenant rents from you. Number five, separate heating and cooling systems. In multi-unit buildings, tenants prefer to have control over their heating and cooling. Having one mechanical system is good for you as a landlord because there's less to maintain, but finding ways to allow tenants to individually control their heating and cooling will yield higher rents. I'm a fan of radiant heating because you can easily create zones or tenants can control the heat on each individual radiator. For cooling, I love ductless splits. Both of these systems can be controlled by the tenants but can often be run from one central system. So as the landlord, you're not maintaining multiple systems. Win, win. Number four, separate entrances. I used to live in a condo in downtown Toronto and when I would hear other tenants in the hallways, I would wait inside my unit until I didn't hear them anymore before I would leave my unit. I understand this says a lot about me, but I know that I'm not alone in this. In my experience, tenants prefer not to have to share an entrance with other tenants. This can be because of privacy or security or in my case, my need to try and avoid small talk. So anytime you can figure out a way that your tenants don't have to share an entrance or an exit, this will yield a higher rental rate. Number three, including internet and cable. This is a great way to add value to your rental properties without a large cost to you as the owner. In most of my buildings, I will install an ethernet cable to each unit and have a central modem somewhere in the building. In each suite, I provide a wireless router that is hardwired through the ethernet cable to the main modem. This gives each tenant their own wireless router so their connection is always strong and doesn't have to be shared. And by hardwiring it to the main modem, the internet speed is sufficient. I can set up one internet package for the building and pay for it and then charge my tenants a monthly fee, which is usually less than what they would pay if they had to have their own dedicated service. Number two, furnishing your rentals. 
Having a furnished rental is a great way to add value to a property. There are many tenants now who are looking for as little commitment as possible when it comes to rental properties and the amount of stuff they accumulate. Millennials, for instance, often are okay to pay a higher rental rate if they can potentially pick up and leave or move without having to worry about dealing with a bunch of furniture and furnishings. But this doesn't mean you can't have long-term leases. The other great thing about renting furnished suites is you'll have less wear and tear on the building because when a tenant moves out and moves in is usually when damage happens. And the number one way to add value to a rental property is by having laundry services on site. Tenants will pay extra to rent a property that has laundry facilities. The more exclusive you can get with your laundry facilities, the higher the rent you can charge. Having laundry in the building is okay, but having laundry in each suite is even better. Tenants don't necessarily want to share washing machines and they don't want to have to have the inconvenience of having to be on a specific schedule to do their laundry. As promised, I wanted to share a couple of hacks I use to lower my expenses on my rental properties. It's not just about adding value, it's also about reducing expenses in order to create more profit on your properties. Simple items like changing out toilets and shower heads to low flow options will pay for themselves very quickly. Installing smart thermostats is also a great way to reduce your costs. These smart thermostats start to learn your tenants' habits and will lower the heating or cooling requirements when the units are vacant. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What are some ways that you are adding value to your rental properties or reducing expenses? Leave those in the comments section below along with any of your real estate investing related questions for me. If you're interested in learning more about my masterclass, check it out at darrenvoros.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.